Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Keeping up with the situation in Ukraine and with regards to precious metals, it looks like the metals are kind of pulling back a little bit here. In other words, they're not climbing as much in overnight trading in Asia as the markets have opened up. And this is mainly due to a retraction potentially by the administration in Ukraine. The Ukrainian president clarifies ironic claim that a Russia to attack on Wednesday. This is very bizarre, kind of very interesting. And this is from Reuters here through the Jerusalem Post. The Ukrainian president clarifies this thing. The advisor to the president, Mikhailo Podulyak, said that Zelensky was not being literal, but ironic when he said that February 16th will be the day of the attack. And it talks about here. <clears throat> that Russian president of Vladimir Z uh, Zelensky's advisor walked back the president's statement that February 16th will be the day of the attack on Ukraine on by Russia on Monday night. According to CNN, presidential advisor Mikhailo Podolyak said that Zelensky was not being literal when he said that the attack would be on Wednesday. He was reportedly being ironic. Well, how do you be ironic if the direct quote is February 16th will be the day of the attack. According to Zelensky's spokesperson, Sergei Nikoyorov, his statement was referring to dates already reported on the press elsewhere. The president referred to a date that was spread by the media. Okay, I guess you could make that claim or whatever. I don't know. I heard the word moment in there, but... Anyways, I guess you could say that they're telling us that they're going. He's going to that Putin is going to attack on the sixteenth. I don't know. There's a direct transla uh, translation or transcript of his speech, and maybe, uh, you know, the, there might be a language barrier and lost in translation type of situation. Zelensky, who had a career as a comedian before becoming president, wrote that the Ukrainian government was told that Wednesday would be the day of the attack as he announced a new decree to establish a National Day of Unity, increase funding of military service people, accelerate the development of defenses, and create an information system to apprise citizens of the security situation. According to the document, the decree would serve to strengthen the consolidation of Ukrainian society, strengthen its resilience in the face of growing hybrid threats. Um, the article kind of goes on here and it mentions that they're Military is much better than it was eight years ago. Uh, but he says, we have a unique combat experience with modern weapons. It's many times stronger than the Army eight years ago. Um, and so this is supposed to be a national day of invasion, would also become a national day of unity. So I don't understand really kind of how that's ironic or whatever. But he says that he suggests that people return within 24 hours. Ukrainian media reported some lawmakers and top businessmen had fled the country last weekend after the U.S., Britain, and other Western countries advised their citizens to leave Ukraine. <coughs> so we don't really know for sure. Only Putin knows um, as to when or how they're going to attack. But my guess is this walk back is probably done to maybe encourage people to come back thinking there's no invasion imminent. But when you have 130,000 troops and you can see through satellite images and intelligence that they are increasing, more than likely it is going to happen soon. It may not be Wednesday, but it very well could be within days or maybe a week after. Uh, but this could all be just some big grandstand. That's a possibility. But nonetheless, it is a big threat and it could lead to pretty big uncertain uh, times and I think that's why gold and silver are reacting. However, I think in part because of the statement and because of what we're seeing now playing out in the media, uh, the prices for gold and silver are still rising, but not as much. I mean, silver is now almost at twenty-four dollars an ounce, and and gold is um you know just a couple of dollars away from eighteen seventy-five. And so it's going to be very interesting. I'm surprised actually that palladium has dropped two dollars. Uh, given all this, you would think it would stay where it is or climb up a little bit more and steady. Uh, the gold to silver ratio, however, is narrowing a little bit more to 78.4. And when we see times like this, no matter what, 
uh, is driving the prices, whether it be some geopolitical event like it is now um, or inflation or a combination thereof. Typically, when the prices spike up dramatically, you see silver move much faster and higher <clears throat> than gold. And we are seeing that now, and we saw that today. I think that's one reason why the ratio has narrowed some. And if you continue to see this, we'll continue to see it climb. However, if we go another week and nothing happens, I think we're going to see the metals fall back a bit. Um, there's still concern about inflation, but more than likely, there's nothing going to be coming about that until uh, mid-March, unless there's some other inflationary or supply chain issues, such as we're seeing with the trucker situation, that have a direct impact, uh, then we could very well see the prices you know, continue to steadily climb upwards. And I believe as they do climb upwards, slow as they may, may be right now in the opening hours here uh, on Tuesday morning um, in Asia, I believe that it's going to be harder for them to claw back kind of to where they were before all of this uh, really ramped up. Uh, but nonetheless, well, they have to take the news as it comes and see where things go. But I believe it's wise to us to kind of uh, take a step back and uh, evaluate our personal situations financially before we make any purchases um, and kind of see where things uh, lay out. But whenever you do make decisions based off of geopolitical events like this, typically they do normalize, uh, you know, unless, it, you know, but this is one of those situations where many people think it could go many different ways uh, in terms of a full incursion. An absolute invasion uh, that could be met with great resistance and perhaps other nations get involved, whether they want to or not. It could somehow happen. I don't know. We'll see. Um, because I think if, you know, Belarus, I don't really understand Belarus' situation. You know, are they with uh, Russia? Apparently the troops are in Belarus. So apparently Belarus is very friendly with Russia. Um, and so there is that. And if you see some sort of incursion there by their troops coming in as well, uh, that could maybe spur a greater regional conflict. And we know how things worked out in uh, 1939. Um, and so those are some things to consider here as we look at the geopolitical uh, landscape. Uh, but the metals certainly are reacting to this news. And what's going to happen, the uncertainty is the biggest driver here. I think for the for the rising prices, we'll see how it plays out. But just thought I'd share this. Pretty interesting how the news has taken a little bit of a turn here, and apparently there's a bit of a walk back by the administration there in Ukraine. Uh, pretty interesting indeed. So we'll find out where this thing goes um, and how long it lasts. So there you go. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch. And encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.